So I spent some time today taking a look at PostGraphile and evaluating it. And for those of you that have not tried this or haven't heard of it, what it is is a library to help you create GraphQL APIs from your PostgreSQL database. So how it works is you go ahead and you create your database, you create the tables in it, and then you can run this tool or you can plug this into your Express server. There's a couple of different ways you can use it. And then what it'll do is it'll actually create a GraphQL API from your database. So what I did is I already have some PostgreSQL databases on my computer and it's pretty easy to just point the tool at them. So here you can just call or just run this command right here and then passing the database name in. And basically what happens is it creates all the CRUD operations for your database tables um, and GraphQL, which is pretty cool. Um, but the thing that I'm really interested in is, all right, CRUD is awesome. How do I take that? So like, that's really what I want from tools like this is to help save time for me. I don't have to write those CRUD operations. But what's interesting is to see how the tools like this handle custom customizing both the GraphQL schema and adding kind of custom resolvers. So I was taking a look at the example that they have. This is the form example in their repo. And here is the um, just the SQL they want to create a forum database. So this is what they're um, basically running the tool on. And they have some basically custom stuff that they're doing here. And so for this, they're actually writing or keeping everything in SQL. So one thing you'll notice that I usually have not used before in Postgres is comments. So here you can see they're actually adding comments on tables and columns. And what this does is it actually adds descriptions to the GraphQL schema, which is pretty cool. And then you can see they're also creating some SQL tables. That's pretty usual. Here's an enum. Um, but where things get interesting is they start to use some Postgres functions, which personally I haven't used a lot of, which is kind of interesting. So I have this actually, I went, just went through the readme of this one and it explains how to set this up. Basically you just clone the repo run the this SQL code to generate the database and then run the tool on it. And when you run the tool on it, you can go to localhost 5000 and come over here to graphical and you can see what the schema it creates for you. So it's kind of interesting. We get all the CRUD operations, but then there's some stuff besides that. So at the bottom here, there's authenticate and register. And actually what authenticate is, is a function. So if I just search on this page, authenticate, uh, we can see right here this Postgres function right here. It maps to a, um, a mutation over here, which is interesting. We can see it takes email, password, which are text. And we can see it takes the same thing over here. And you click into the input. You can see it's email password. So I'm assuming it kind of auto-generates this. I'm not sure if there's another type of mapping, but I'm thinking it's getting it exactly from this, taking the parameters from here and kind of generating it. From there which is kind of interesting it's pretty cool um, so this has a little bit of a learning curve because if I want to use it at least with this way because I actually don't write SQL functions too much so I'm not really familiar with the syntax and then also there's um, some other stuff in here this is an interesting file I'd recommend it I'll link this below if you're interested to um, check this out but they also have um, how they add some authentication to this sort of thing and they're ad adding a row level authentication or checks. Um, and then they're doing some JWT stuff, which I haven't really seen how it works in SQL before. And I've never really tried that before, which is kind of interesting to see. So it would take some time to kind of look into this and figure out how this works um, compared to what I usually do. Um, but that's kind of interesting. The other thing is you can add fields onto things. So for example, so here I was just calling authenticate um, but let's go over here to our query, and if we come to the all people, we can see all the stuff in this, and I'm going to go to person, and you'll, ne you'll notice the fields on this. So we can see ID, first name, last name, about, and created at. If we come to the person table over here, um, and I think it's at the top, here's a trigger. So that's um, the other thing is they're adding created at and update that as database triggers, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think it's at the top. Yeah, here's our person. So here we see first name, last name, 
that's another thing. They have some conversions in the name, so you'll notice they get rid of the underscore and camel case it, which is nice. Um, but you'll notice there's a field missing here. So uh, full name, um, which actually I don't even see it here. Yeah, here it is. Full name is what I was looking at, uh, which is basically a computed field where it adds the first name and last name together. And it's not here. So how did they create that computed field? Well, they created a, a function for it. And that's what this person full name thing is doing here. Um, and we can see here they're selecting both the first name and last name. And this is how you can cadenate in Postgres. So that's how you can add computed fields. Now, personally, I don't think I'll be uh, creating a whole bunch of functions in Postgres and putting most of this logic in Postgres. Um, it looks very compact, and I feel like this is actually probably very efficient because it looks like they have a pretty um, good server for this amount of code. But I, I see myself preferring to write this stuff in JavaScript or TypeScript. And luckily you can, which looks really nice. So I can actually pair this with this extension or this plugin. And basically I can add in my own type defs, it looks like, and resolvers. I haven't tried it out yet, but it looks like this is the path where I see myself going um, if I continue to use PostGraphQL. So having it kind of inflect and create the CRUD operations for me, but then kind of these extra resolvers or fields that I want to add, do it through this plugin versus creating, um, uh, going in and customizing the SQL and adding SQL functions and whatnot. Now I think this is a nice to have, like being able to come in doing this is nice, but I see myself using um, the extend function and adding customization this way. And I think this makes a lot of sense. But yeah, that was just some thoughts I had while going through PostGraphile. Uh, I'm curious if you guys have tried this tool out and if you like it, let me know your thoughts on it.